Who's who's here for the first time? Raise your hand. Okay. I was promoting the show uh, because no one else would do it for me. And uh, I'm talking to this guy and he goes, oh, it's at the hive. Okay, cool. Uh, which hive? I'm like, well, what are you talking about? He's like, well, there's two hives. There's the event place and there's the trampoline park. <laughs> well, which one do you think it is, right? I mean, what would that even look like? You sit and I jump. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Or we're all jumping together. Knock, knock. Who's there? Like, I don't know how that would work. I'm just getting my voice back. Maybe you can tell. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the show tonight, but I felt empowered recently because I've been whisper yelling at my kids, and it's working really, really well. You put that back, and you get over here right now. And I'm just going to keep doing it, even when I have my voice back. That's just how it's going to go. But no, I, uh, earlier in this year, we were thinking about doing a show, and... Uh, I didn't know if we wanted to do it, but now that I'm self-employed, nobody can tell me what to do. Let's hear it for that, right? Anybody self-employed? <clears throat> Except my wife. We're, oh, yeah, right there. <laughs> and her mom. And my mom. And the IRS. But other than that, nobody can tell me what to do. So uh, Ann and I own a cleaning company. It's called Jarvis Cleaning Solutions. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, we clean everything. We clean businesses, stores, a home. I'll clean anything except my own house. You can ask her. I'll do it. <laughs> now, we have, we have fun doing that. But uh, yeah, with the cleaning company, it's uh, interesting because we went into the cleaning business because I'm thinking AI is going to take all our jobs eventually, right? Merry Christmas. And, uh, <laughs> but cleaning will be one of the last to go because how could a robot do that for you? So whenever I see a Roomba, I step on it. <laughs> it's called job security. <laughs> but no, cleaning's fun. We get this interesting one. We clean homes for people. And I'll, I'll text them. I say, I'm 15 minutes away. And they go, OK, let me tidy up. <laughs> I do that. That's why you pay me the money. That's pretty good, but not great. It's kind of like if you were uh, going to go to Olive Garden, you have a little pregame spaghetti in the parking lot. <laughs> Like, why would you do that, right? <clears throat> but no, we, we clean for all kinds of people. It's actually kind of funny and ironic. I clean for a lot of old people. And that's funny because, you know, when I was younger, they would clean up after me. Uh, I clean up for a lot of people from Utah that hate people from out of state. So it's funny and ironic because I don't tell them I'm from Oregon, right? <laughs> uh, and I actually clean for a lot of Latinos. And if there's anything funny or ironic about that to you, then shame on you. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> no, actually, remember, during the 2016 election, yeah, we're going there right now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Kelly Osborne was on a show called The View, and they were talking about Trump, and she looks right in the camera. She's British, and she goes, if you deport all the Latinos, Donald Trump, then who's going to clean your toilet? And I'm like, that is a very not good thing to say. <laughs> Secondly, I will do it. I will clean your toilet. <laughs> I... <laughs> If you thought that was edgy, here we go, okay. <laughs> no, I'm a, bad, I'm a bad man. I actually have a long history with the law. You may not know this about me. I got pulled over in high school twice. Yeah. But it was by the same cop both times. <laughs> okay, first time he pulls me over, I'm not wearing my seatbelt. And he goes, hey, you know, wear your seatbelt. I'm like, okay, thanks for your service, right? So I go to school. Second time he pulls me over, he's like, are you the kid that wasn't wearing his seatbelt? I'm like, who's asking? He's like, me. I'm like, are you a cop? He's like, yes, I'm a cop with the car. And the... But uh, he gave me, uh, I said, are you going to give me a ticket? He goes, no, I'll, I'll give you a citation. And if, <laughs> I didn't know those were the same thing. So I get to school. My buddy's like, hey, we were pulling up to school. We saw you get pulled over. Did he give you a ticket? I'm like, nah, he just gave me a citation. He's like, it's the same thing, you idiot. <laughs> thing was 300 bucks in 2010, right? So, yeah. But uh, what ended up happening was I, I didn't have enough money to pay for it. I, I just opened my stocking on Christmas. There was the receipt. Santa had paid it for me. It's just a little note, ho, 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 slow the heck down. <laughs> <laughs> 
so that happened. Uh, speaking of the police, it was just Thanksgiving. I don't know. That's a non sequitur. How was Thanksgiving for you guys? Yeah, good? Let's pick on somebody. Who thought they had a great Thanksgiving? Not a soul. Oh, over here. And who are you? My name's Julie. You look like my sister, Julie. <laughs> Why was your Thanksgiving great? Um, because I got to be with family and because oh. the woman hosting is a chef. Hey, Aunt Allie. We're going to talk about Thanksgiving with Aunt Allie in just a second. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, Thanksgiving, one of the first things I think of. So at my church, I volunteer with some of the kids. And I know some of you are like, I, I go to that church too, Anthony, come on. <laughs> um, we teach a class of four-year-olds in Sunday school. And we all get together for singing time, right? So the kids are doing this thing where they're pinning the feather on the turkey. And somewhere along the lines, some kids start putting the feathers on the turkey's legs instead of his body. I'm like, all right, well, they're just kids, right? And then halfway through, I just sarcastically look at the other adults, and I'm like, look at this turkey. It needs to shave its legs, right? Then one of the moms in there was like, well, maybe it's winter, and she feels more comfortable if she doesn't shave her legs. <laughs> and maybe it's none of your business. And I was like, oh, this isn't about the turkey. <laughs> this is about me, and you need to shut up right now. <clears throat> that was exciting. <laughs> so uh, Thanksgiving. People always associate Thanksgiving with tense political conversations. Don't worry. We already did that. <laughs> but other people are like, oh, Thanksgiving, we get together. And, and, and we've adopted the motto in our family of um, forgive, but don't forget. So we don't bring up those tense conversations. We've moved on, but we don't forget that they were tense. I, I kind of wonder what the opposite of that is. Um, what would that be? That would be forget but not forgive. I think that would be a lot of fun to observe. <laughs> it looks something like it. So I fight with my cousin last Thanksgiving. He comes in, hey, Anthony, how are you? Good. Gabe, how are you? <laughs> I remember that. That was way better on paper, guys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, let's talk about Allie. So I love Allie to death. This is my aunt. Let's give her a round of applause. <clears throat> when we're in Utah, not in Oregon, we have Thanksgiving with Allie's family. It's amazing. She's a chef. There's, there's wonderful food everywhere, and we all have a good time. There is, however, one tradition that I consider both not great and a little communist, and that is... We play a soccer game after we eat <laughs> every year. Now, the rationale behind this is, OK, you eat a bunch, you go play soccer, and now you can run the calories off. What ends up happening is I just have second thoughts because I know I'm going to have to trot around. So I just look at everything and eat a lot less, right? It, it ends up becoming like I could eat a whole pie and watch a soccer game, or I could eat half a pie and play half a soccer game. So I'm like doing this math in my head. <laughs> This last time, Julie was like, Anthony, stop staring at that pie. Let's go play the game, right? <laughs> so we all go out there. And let me tell you, like, everybody wants to play goalie. The only problem is you have to get to the goal faster than everyone else, which I can't do after eating Thanksgiving dinner. I just can't do it. So uh, I've just uh, gotten trimmer and trimmer every Thanksgiving. Thank you, Allie. It's, Thanksgiving at Allie's is better than Ozempic. It just cuts back on everything. But. Now, okay, what we're really here about is Christmas. Who's excited for Christmas? Anybody? Yeah? <clears throat> I'll answer my own question. Who's excited for Christmas? Jeff Bezos. <laughs> this guy makes bank every single Christmas. Yeah, he's the former CEO of uh, Amazon and uh, Lex Luthor lookalike. <laughs> and uh, man, we just, we just buy so many things from Amazon every Christmas. After Christmas, the boxes are just laying everywhere. You guys know what I'm talking about? I wish they would break down as easily as I do on Christmas. <laughs> they don't. But uh, no, Amazon's got a strong brand. Strong brand. It's just an arrow that looks like a smiley face. Very noticeable. There's a lot of powerful branding, especially during Christmas. Like there's a lot of generic shoes I buy my kids at Walmart. But every once in a while, when we're feeling lucky, we'll steal some Nikes. 
And my son, I'm wearing Nikes right now. My son comes up to me and goes, Daddy, what does that swoosh mean on the Nikes? And I go, oh, um, it means that someone in Vietnam made them. That's your age. <laughs> And I'm going to wear these for the rest of the show. <clears throat> but no, there's, there's some good branding out there. I think you guys would recognize it. Let's try it together. And I think some of this branding has brainwashed us into mindless zombies where we know these jingles, but we don't know the basic facts of life. And I'm going to prove myself right right now. Finish the jingle. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Now, how many feet are in a mile? Five. Now, I don't really want to know. <laughs> She ruined it, and a bunch of other people. <clears throat> All right, we'll do another one. McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -bum. Now, how do you spell charcuterie? <laughs> Nobody knows. Okay, two people up here know. But other than that, but no, some of these jingles are funny. Um, who knows the catchphrase of Capital One? Capital One. What's in your wallet? It's Christmas, there's nothing in there, okay? <laughs> That's the answer. Um, who's familiar with the radio jingle for O'Reilly Auto Parts? The people are like, is this, is this a yeah, test? Is there like, okay, who knows it? Who would like to sing the jingle for O'Reilly's? Anyone? <laughs> Julie. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ow! Thank you. <laughs> that was brilliant, thank you. <clears throat> They can make that a lot more relatable to me by just changing the words. Oh, 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 my body. I'm falling apart. Ow! <laughs> my voice went out right when I said, I'm going to get a drink. That was too good. I really am. I'm falling apart. That is fantastic. Now, personal branding. We use it all in our regular lives. We're all salespeople. And some of us are just really bad at it, okay? But some of us are great. In my family, a Christmas tradition of ours is mom and dad get everything ready on Christmas Eve and they shove us all in one room together. I had eight siblings. One room. This is a violation of the Geneva Convention. <laughs> they put us all in one room, lock the door, put on a movie, like, it's a slumber party, it's great, it's Christmas Eve. And that's their branding and it, it works out great and we don't turn them into the UN or anything, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> this kind of stuff uh, comes up in other areas of life. One Christmas, I was very mad at my sister, okay? You can imagine me as a small child, it was last year. <laughs> it was, it, I was small and young. It was several Thanksgivings ago. <laughs> we got in a fight and I go, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go out in the woods in Oregon, wrap up a moldy pine cone, that's her gift. I'm gonna watch her open it. So on Christmas, she opens it and pieces are falling off. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Katie. She goes, gee, thanks. Branding though, right? Put a little cinnamon on that. Fourteen ninety nine at Hobby Lobby, okay? <laughs> Eight ninety nine at Ross. <clears throat> but no, uh, when it when it comes to that sort of thing, thinking about Christmas, we're going to get into some of the the deep trenches of philosophy here, okay? We're going to talk about this, uh, whether to tell your kids if Santa is real or not, okay? Is anybody here still? know that he is, you can leave. Okay, you can go out, cover your ears. Just kidding. So we're gonna talk about Santa. Now, in my years of study, there are three schools of thought, three groups of people when it comes to telling your kids about Santa, okay? The first group is people who are okay with telling kids that Santa is real. The second group is people who are okay with people that tell their kids Santa is real. And the third group is absolutely miserable. They don't have friends, they don't have, and I was telling this to one of my friends, he goes, that's not true. There's plenty of reasons why. I'm like, number three. That's, <laughs> just gave himself away, okay. Now we have this debate about Santa Claus. I actually took a philosophy class in college. I really liked it. My professor said to me, you know, you're, you're so good at this, you should get a degree in philosophy. I'm like, well, I don't know about that. But we're talking about it, and in class he's like, I like to be philosophically and ethically consistent with my kids. So I don't confirm or deny that there's a Santa. Here's how I do it. This is what he told us in class. He goes, my son said, Daddy, do you think Santa's going to come out and eat these cookies later? And he just goes, oh, wouldn't that be cool if he did? 
Daddy, is Santa going to bring me presents? Well, what do you think? And that's what he would do. He wouldn't confirm or deny. But for me, it's like, what's the bigger lie? Telling your kid that Santa's real or telling a college kid it's a good idea to get a philosophy degree, right? <laughs> if you're okay with that. <clears throat> we tolerate all kinds of lies in society that are way more harmful than that, okay? Uh, one I can think of, there's something good about paper straws. <laughs> that is a lie. It makes me want to get a plastic one and shove it straight up a sea turtle's nose. That's what it does, okay? <clears throat> <laughs> Peeing on a jellyfish sting will heal it. That is a lie. <laughs> Thousands of people have been victimized by a jellyfish and then victimized again right away. <laughs> We just let that go. <laughs> he's having so much fun. We'll tell him it's not real next year. Look at him. He thinks he's helping. <laughs> You're going to stop doing that, aren't you? Yeah. Um, no, but uh, the biggest one I think around here is people say, there are these oils, and they are essential. <laughs> and they don't mean petroleum. So I'm not quite, and someone, someone in my other show was like, uh, that means essence, not uh, necessary. And I'm like, he exits behind you, okay? <laughs> Don't explain my joke to me. <laughs> Doterra boy. <laughs> Isn't this a great show? It's Mary Crisis. You knew who you're getting into, right? <laughs> no, so one of the most famous uh, stories during Christmas, t tell me if you've heard this. It's World War I. The men are in the trenches, but it's Christmas. They all put down their guns come out of the trenches, and the British and the Germans play a game of soccer and drink together and sing songs and then go back to killing each other the next day. But it's a very inspirational story, right? Has anyone heard that story before? Okay. That one, we'll just say it's true. Santa's real. So when I heard that story for the first time, that was like the most European thing I've ever heard in my life. Stop the trench warfare, boys. Let's play soccer with the enemy. No, that's not the American way. This is at Thanksgiving at Allie's house. The American way is it's, it's 1776 on Christmas and George Washington's standing there going, you know this one. <laughs> There's some Germans on the other side of the river, but it is Christmas. So let's kill them in their sleep. <clears throat> and, that, and that's where that picture comes from of him standing there going like, duck the halls with boughs of hell. <laughs> Right? And they're going across the river. I was telling my brother Alex this joke. I'm like, what do you think they'll think at the show? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> that makes America look bad and it's really violent. Why don't you rewrite the joke as George Washington crossing the Delaware, but twas the night before Christmas? And I'm like, that is a really bad idea. And I tried to write it all down, but all I could think about was gash away, gash away, gash away all. <laughs> The Germans were nestled all snug in their beds when American musket balls went straight through their heads. <laughs> so we're not doing it. <clears throat> I'm glad that worked out. I really thought that would be the last joke of the show. So I wasn't planning on going on at all. German culture is actually interspersed in all of American society. And it's not just hamburgers, right? I was talking to another buddy of mine. He's like, no, English is entirely separate from German. People say the alphabets are related, but there's, there's no correlation at all. And I'm like, oh, really? Where did you take your kid to school this morning? Kindergarten? <laughs> did you see someone that looked like you at the store? Are they your doppelganger? <laughs> it's everywhere. Christmas tradition actually is heavily reliant on German tradition. Who's heard of Krampus? Yeah, some of you are like, I just don't say it out loud three times in the mirror. <laughs> Krampus is a German tradition. He's basically the anti clause And I used to think like Santa would come in and save the kids from Krampus. But I looked it up. They go around together <laughs> on Krampusnacht, which is December 5th, tonight. So check under your beds. But Santa and Krampus go around, 
and Santa meets out presents, or Krampus meets out lashings to the children, and one will watch the other do their job. They're not enemies, they're buddies. <laughs> and they're both being funded by BlackRock, I know it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so there's that. Now, um, I was having dinner in Oregon. If you've never been to Oregon, it's a very hippy-dippy place. There is good camping, the woods, the coast, downtown Portland. <laughs> But I was talking with some of my friends in real estate. I used to do it. I think that's not very unique. But I used to do real estate, and we're having dinner, and I, uh, we're talking about Christmas tradition, and I lean over, and I talk to Liz. I go, Liz, what are Christmas traditions in your house? And she goes, I am a pagan witch. And she wasn't joking. <laughs> she said, Christmas comes from Yule. You Christians are stealing traditions from us paganists, and you're all hypocrites for it. Go and do your own research. I was like, ooh, okay. So I read a lot on Wikipedia about Christmas trees and this sort of thing, and I looked up articles, and I've come to the conclusion that I don't care about that <laughs> at all. I have a good time during Christmas, and I don't get into the details. My, one of my other favorite things is, uh, you know, an, an atheist will walk up and go, oh, Jesus wasn't really born on December 25th. Did you know that? Did you know that? And I just go, you don't believe he was born any day, so you don't really get a piece of this conversation, okay? <laughs> Makes me want to just grab him by the turtleneck <laughs> and, and love him because Jesus told me to, right? <laughs> I'm actually okay with atheists. It's just belligerent atheists I can't stand. And the most belligerent atheist I've ever met is my son when it's Sunday morning and time to go to church. <laughs> Come on, Austin, get up. Oh, stupid church. Oh, I'll go to church. Come on, Dad. Austin, get up. Dad, when we go to church, we're just praying on our biological need for community. He's four. I'm going to let you decide if he actually said that. He said it. My phone was downstairs. I didn't get to film it. When we go to church, we're just praying on our own biological need for community. And I just said, as long as you're praying. That went way better in my head. But no, uh, yeah, that's always a fun one. Sometimes when I'm getting him dressed for church, it's like he's got a demon inside of him. And he doesn't want to get dressed. Daddy, no, come on. This is a violation of the Geneva Convention. I'm like, who's your dad? <laughs> we'll get that demon out of you. We're going to have you pin some feathers on a turkey's leg, and that spirit will jump right out of you. <clears throat> Good times. Try it. Try it. You can exercise Krampus right out of you with some turkey leg. Now, here's a tough one. Uh, one Christmas, my dad came home with some religious material from another church. It was a DVD. I'll tell you how long ago it was. He got it from Blockbuster. <laughs> this is a long time ago. A DVD about Preacher Billy and the Church of Stop Shopping. This is a real church. <laughs> he comes in and he plays the DVD. It's close to Christmas. We watch it. Preacher Billy's got his choir, and he's like, capitalism's going to ruin the world. Consumerism's going to consume us with fire. The shapocalypse is coming. <laughs> the whole documentary accumulates, culminates, what did I say, with them sneaking into Disneyland on Christmas and then getting their signs out and telling everybody, shame on you, you should be at home thinking about Jesus, not here at Disneyland, with Mickey Mouse the Antichrist. <laughs> and they all get arrested, and then Dad takes the DVD out, and he's like, what do you guys think? I don't know, Dad. So he converted real fast. Um, there was a lot of religious tension in my home. My mom was a non-denominational shopper. My dad was Church of Stop Shopping. I don't know. I wanted to make them both happy. I'd go to Disneyland on Christmas and just kind of tell people, hey, you probably shouldn't be here. You know, I, I do both, right? <laughs> but... Uh, no, my, my dad's got a birthday on December 23rd. Anybody else a Christmas baby? Anybody? Ooh, okay. Danny, are you a Christmas baby? I know your name, Danny. We're, we're having a baby soon. Any day now. 
hopefully not Christmas itself, but my dad and everybody else says the same thing. My birthday's so close to Christmas that everyone just combines my gift with their Christmas gift, and everyone just decorates for Christmas and then maybe writes my name on some construction paper and puts it on the, the front door for one day. And uh, the, you know, my dad and all these other people are always annoyed. Oh, Christmas is a, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Is the savior of all mankind overshadowing your little birthday party? <laughs> Should we tone it down a notch? <laughs> Just for the pagan witch? <laughs> what do you guys think? I don't know. You guys like that about how I thought you would. That is fantastic. <laughs> Christmas songs. Who's got a favorite Christmas song? Let's get to it. Come on. Marshmallow World. That's my favorite Christmas song. <laughs> Who's got one? Let's talk about it. Let's, let's unpack that. I hate it when people say that. Let's unpack your favorite Christmas song. Yes. Uh, Last Christmas by Wham. Last Christmas by Wham. <laughs> you know, uh, the singer of Wham died in his prime. So one time he was singing Last Christmas, and it really was. <laughs> I am a good person. I am. Who else would like to say? Yeah. Silent Night. Don't have to ruin it. <laughs> Silent Night. People always try to whip that out as an insult. Who sings Silent Night? Maybe we should let them sing it and then like trying to make everybody be quiet. But honestly, I like it. You know why? It's German. <laughs> it's good. I got one I like. Uh, what's one that I like? Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Come on, you already hit the Latinos earlier in the show. No, look, Feliz Navidad's interesting. It did seem like it needed to be turned in tomorrow, and they hadn't written it yet. <laughs> okay? <laughs> what do you got? Feliz Navidad. And that's it. <laughs> Okay, why don't we just run it back in English? I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, and that's it. <laughs> Who else has a song they like? Holden. Up on the housetop. Up on the housetop. That song was great until I watched the Santa Claus. <laughs> Did you know, in the original writing of the Santa Claus, they were going to have Tim Allen shoot Santa Claus, thinking he was a home invader. <laughs> and Tim Allen wanted to keep it. But the Disney execs were like, we can't just open a film with killing Santa Claus. We have to kill someone's parents. <laughs> not Santa Claus. <laughs> That's not how we do it. What's another one of my favorites? Oh, have any? Oh, oh we got one over here. Let's talk about it. What do we got? I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> Ah, now, <laughs> this is when mommy tells you that you don't know what you were talking about. Santa isn't real. <laughs> now go back to bed. <laughs> I always thought that one was interesting. Um, I, I know with my adult brain that that's probably mom and dad. It's mom and dad, right? <laughs> okay. I was asking you guys. Um, here, here we go. Here's one. The Grinch song. Okay. Who knows the Grinch song? Almost everyone, unfortunately. Now, if you don't have any context, you don't know that the Grinch is this green guy who goes down to Whoville in a Dr. Seuss book and he steals Christmas, but then he has a change of heart. It grows three times in size. And let's be honest, with a Christmas diet, it happens to all of us. <laughs> we get an enlarged heart, okay? But his heart grows three times in size and then he goes and brings Christmas back to everybody. It's very heartwarming. The only problem is, if you don't know any of that, the song just sounds like a diss track. <laughs> and it's couched in between Silent Night, Angels We Have Heard on High. Screw that Grinch. He's mean, he's nasty, he doesn't have any friends. <laughs> oh, holy night. He smells bad and he steals stuff. And I wouldn't touch him with a 39 and a half foot pole. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I think that's funny. I think that's why aliens haven't come to Earth yet. They're like, we see how you treat green people. <laughs> We're not doing it. Okay? It actually sounds like something Trump would write. Are you going to work with me on this? 
He's the mean one. No friends is Grinch. I call him Grinch. Grinch, no friends, no family. He stole Christmas from me. <laughs> and if we don't stop it, we'll do it again, folks. <laughs> That's a good one. All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. It's, it's a, a little bit of everything. Okay. So this song bothers me so much. I did all the research on it and we're going to unpack it. All right. All I want for Christmas is you. It's the same age as me. It's, a, it's almost a 30 year old song. Okay. Mariah Carey, every year we resurrect her out of the grave, stand her up straight, put a little life in her face and shove her out on stage and she sings it. Okay. There's like 12 music videos for it and it's all over the radio. Every time the song is played, Mariah Carey makes five cents. I looked it up. Last year, it played 31 and a half million times. She made a, a million and a half dollars on a 30-year-old song. That made me so mad, I did math on purpose. Okay? <laughs> this song is nuts. I feel like every time it comes on the radio, I go through the five stages of grief every <laughs> Christmas season. This can't be happening. I'll do anything. Make it stop. And then somewhere around December 20th, everything kind of snaps. And I start to like it, and it's acceptance. And before I try this, I'm going to take a drink. Make my wish come true. <laughs> Maybe all I want for Christmas is my voice back. <laughs> what do you think? Anybody? Thank you. Now, as kind of a final thought, um, people are always saying, don't forget the true meaning of Christmas. You have to keep the true meaning of Christmas in your heart. And the same people never say what the true meaning is, and I think they do not know, <laughs> which is interesting. So let's just remember, during this Christmas season, uh, we celebrate Jesus. We celebrate what he represents, which is forgiveness and love and peace. And I just want to leave that message with you guys. And I wish a Merry Christmas to everybody, except for that lousy old Grinch. <laughs> everybody have a good night. Thank you.